There's more to free speech than just free speech. I'm very much pro free speech, don't get me wrong. The freedom to speak is the freedom to think. Short of advocating violence, I think people should be allowed to say whatever they want. A key reason why progressive media outlets are simply not equipped to deal with problems like Islamic terrorism or ethnic crime is that minority groups are sacred in such a worldview. It's very difficult for someone who sees themselves as progressive to ever see people from an ethnic group as anything other than a victim. Saying things that might be considered negative towards such groups, even if constructive and based on fact, is a kind of blasphemy in such an outlook. But I'm interested in the heat around free speech. We've seen free speech rallies around North America that are really tinged with anger and passion. In Australia, there were similarly heated debates around the late cartoonist Bill Leake and others who got caught up in the web of a local racial discrimination law limiting offence. Beyond the very good reasons for having free speech and discarding subjective measures around experiencing offence, which is a joke in such diverse communities, I think. Free speech means also, has also become a kind of a lightning rod for a host of other passions, which I think are suppressed in our multicultural societies. Our society is one of asymmetrical multicultural, multiculturalism. Ethnic groups are actively encouraged to celebrate their identity, defend their interests, but not so for the white majority. You're encouraged to celebrate your heritage if you're, say, Vietnamese, Italian or Korean. The government will even help fund such things through various community events. But there are often fierce protests during days celebrating nationalism. Australia Day, for example, is branded Invasion Day by its detractors, mainly on the left and including an alliance of indigenous activists and Muslims. The fear is that outward displays of Anglo-Saxon pride delegitimizes the Australianness of other groups. Whites are encouraged to be post-ethnic, suppress their ethnic identity so as not to hurt the sensitivities of other ethnic groups. Americans have remained pretty patriotic, but in countries like Britain and Australia, being patriotic is automatically seen as being racist by a lot of ethnic groups. I think this explains some of the extra passion behind the free speech debate. White people are, to some extent, denied displays of ethnic heritage. This is where ideological causes stripped of any cultural content become a way of channeling nationalism. Things like rule of law, courts, the foundations of the West, and that includes, of course, free speech. It's white identity politics. But this is where I think countries across the Western world need to be mindful of healthily channeling nationalism. This will help dilute any of the angry racist edge that opponents like to depict any displays of nationalism. The nation state is back, but governments need to take control and allow a muscular version to include all groups, including some who may be resistant. Otherwise, it'll be driven by groups less sympathetic to the importance of social cohesion or the sensitivities of migrants and ethnic groups. I'm Tanvir Ahmed. If you like other videos such as this, please subscribe to Rebel Media.